Okay, guys, so I'm going to come up here and make this really quick video. First of all, shalom, shalom, everyone. But I want to make this quick video just really quickly going over this article that I found to be pretty interesting. So I'm going to read through it and then share my thoughts as we go. So this was reported today, August 14th, um, 24, 2024. And it says that the Saudi crown prince, MSB, reportedly fears that he could be killed over Israel normalization. Um, so let's get into it. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman has told uh, visiting U.S. lawmakers that he is risking assassination by pursuing a normalization agreement with Israel, political reports. The Saudi leader has discussed the threats he faces to explain why he must ensure that any deal includes a clear and irreversible path to a future Palestinian state. Citing, according to Politico, citing a former U.S. official familiar with discussions. <clears throat> in one such meeting, he invoked former Egyptian leader Anwar Sadar, who was assassinated in 81 by Egyptian fundamentalists after striking a peace deal with Israel. The way he put it was, Saudis care very deeply about this and the street throughout the Middle East cares de deeply about this. And my, or his tenure as the keeper of the holy sites of Islam will not be secure if he doesn't address what is the most pressing issue of justice in their region. One source familiar with the matter tells Political. It is unclear how recent this talk of assassination is, given that the window for an Israel-Saudi normalization deal has all but shut in recent months, according to the congressional sources. The sources told the Times of Israel that any chance to reach a deal had ended in June amid the ongoing war in Gaza and the shrinking amount of floor time remaining in the Senate calendar that would be needed to ratify the U.S., um, yeah, the U.S. Saudi bilateral component of a deal before the November presidential election. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has repeatedly rejected agreeing to a future Palestinian state, making any such deal a long shot. So it's very interesting to me that someone in that position would be afraid of being murdered. And I'm just trying to figure out, you know, by who? You know, if he's working to bring peace, so to speak, to Israel, I don't think it'll be anyone from America because America is in agreement with the white people being in Israel, the state of Israel. Um, so I would think it would have to be someone that would be on the opposing side, which would be someone from the Arab world. But who in the Arab world would feel comfortable enough to assassinate or kill the Saudi crown prince? You know. Reports are stating that Iran is a rival to Saudi Arabia, and I guess in some ways kind of low-key hinting that if there was a possible assassination, that maybe it could come from that direction. However, even if that were true, it is still shocking to me how someone could feel comfortable enough to take out such an important figure within their own community. That's why I firmly believe that the people that are the ones that could possibly order such a situation to happen, like an assassination, are the people that put these white faces in position, which are the black Arabs. This is the same country, Saudi Arabia, that says that if anyone, from my understanding and research that I've done before, watching different documentaries, if anyone speaks out against the, the kingdom or the prince or whatever and his family, they themselves can risk being assassinated. Allegedly. You know, I could be reaching, but again, to me, I don't feel like I am. This just shows to me that the black Arabs are the ones that are in control. And if you remember, if you read the book of Jasher, there's a passage in there that talks about how the, king, the children of Israel decided to have a king that was not of their own brethren. Because the last time they did, they had some issues break out and they almost, you know, were taken out and wiped out in war. But they ended up getting the upper hand at the last minute and they... And they decided to have a ruler over them and place someone over them that was always outside of their own bloodline and brethren. Okay, so here we are in Jasher chapter 57. I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to jump down to the passage where it speaks on that. I would, you know, I would advise you to go back and read it yourself so that you can um, see what I'm talking about. But if you go down to verse, I'm going to start at verse 30. Um... Eight, and it came to pass in those days that the children of Israel, Esau resolved to crown a king over them in the land of which they became possessed. And they said to each other, Not so, for he shall reign over them in their land, and they shall not be under his counsel, and they shall fight their battles against their enemies. And they did so. All the children of Esau swore, saying that none of their brethren should ever reign over them. 
but a strange man who is not of their brethren for the souls of all the children of Israel I'm sorry all the children of Esau were embittered every man against his son brother and friend on account of the very evil they sustained from their brethren when they fought with the children of Seir Therefore the sons of Esau swore, saying, From that day forward they would not choose a king from their brethren, but one from a strange land unto this day. As you just read there in verse 40, it says that the children of Esau swore that they would not choose a king from their brethren, but they would choose a king from another nation, a foreign land. This is why I say to you all that, yes, you see white people over these Arab countries, as the king or the rulers but they are not the ones who are actually running things scripture does not lie and we know that the face of esau is black when you continue to read that passage you see that the scripture says that they chose a king from another country and they made him rich they crowned him king they gave him his wealth the same as with today so when you go here you see this white man who is calling himself an arab which really is just, he's really just a white man who has a little bit of admixture of, you know, Hebrew or Arab, black Arab DNA, but he's overall, overall, unmistakably white, um, Caucasian descent, Neanderthal. He is not of the bloodline of Israel. I mean, I'm sorry, I keep saying the children of Israel, I'm so, I'm so used to saying that, but he's not of the bloodline of the children of Esau. He is definitely a foreigner and a stranger. So in my mind, who would this man be afraid of in the position that he's running in and operating in? Who could he possibly possibly be afraid of that could kill him for striking some kind of peace treaty with the state of Israel, the white people in Israel today? I find it that no other, no other, op- I mean, the, the only thing I could think of would be the true children of Esau. Who are the ones that are in his that are that place them in position? Because as you saw in the scriptures, they decided to never have one of their own kind, one of their own brethren ruling over them. They always said to have a ruler from a strange, foreign nation, land, and country ruling over them, and that's what that is what's happening here. This is why you see this white family ruling in the kingdom of Esau, Esau the Arabia, because they already said thousands of years ago that they were going to have a stranger ruling them so what could possibly make him afraid who in the foreign i mean who in the arab world could possibly threaten to kill him if just speaking out about him could cause them harm in that country allegedly i just find it very interesting that if you pay attention the way i see it you can tell that the black arab is the one who is running the scenes from behind the scenes but he's not showing his face right now because in my understanding, if he comes out and show and prove that he actually is a child of Israel, I mean the children of Esau, then you would absolutely know who the children of Israel is because they are twins. So you have to have the face of this foreigner looking like they are the Arab people. So that it leads you off into another direction. But, you know, all, all is going to come out in the end anyway. You know, Arabs are black people. Arab just means mix, and Esau was a Hebrew who mixed his DNA with the sons of, I mean, with the daughters of Ishmael as well as the daughters of Mount Seir. And and they also had some Egyptian blood and DNA up in there too, um, just from Esau, I mean, Ishmael and his family as well, his daughters and stuff. But I just wanted to share that really quickly because I thought that was very interesting to me. If he seeks to strike a peace deal with the white people in Israel, these people that he's afraid of could possibly he felt either now or at some point in time recently he felt um could kill him because of doing that and it's just also funny to me that they said here in the article he had to ensure that whatever deal he came to would include a clear and irreversible path to a future palestinian state and i just find it so amazingly mind-blowing the arrogancy that the scripture talks about as well of the children of Esau to actually think that they're going to actually take Yah's land and make it theirs as the scripture says the heathen has parted the land of the most high and they have boasted about having it saying that even the ancient lands are in their possession and this is why the scripture tells us not to hate them but I sure as heck will not be sad when their downfall happens I look forward to the day praise be unto Yahweh Shalom.